Hi, let's continue evaluating n-gram models. In the last video, we looked at how we can separate our data into training and testing sets, and how we can determine the performance of our n-gram models by calculating the perplexity of our testing set. So we would use the probabilities that we calculated with our training set, and we would calculate how perplexed the system was when it saw the sentences in the testing set. In this video, we will continue our evaluation of n-gram models. We will look at how we can deal with words that we've never seen before. We're going to call these out of vocabulary words. And we're going to look at some sources of biases that can creep into our model. So let's start with the words. Do you know the names for these two? The one on the left is a wug. Uh, it comes from an experiment in linguistics where very young children uh, were asked to look at the picture and a researcher told them, this is a wug, and now there's two of them. Uh, what are they called? There are two, and then they would, try to they would try to see if the children could say the word wugs in the plural or not, meaning that they had learned the rule for the English plural. So the one on the left is called a wug. The one on the right is called Mr. Meeseeks from the TV show Rick and Morty. So Wug and Mr. Meeseeks are very strange words. They're words that you would not expect to find even in a very large corpus of English, one that had a hundred million words. We're going to be finding new words all the time because humans are always coming up with new words. And our system needs to know what to do with them. Because if you remember, for example, our bigram matrices, we need to find the probability by looking at whether the word is in uh, the rows of the matrix and the other row in the word in the columns of the matrices. If the word is not there, then we cannot do anything. So we're going to have an explicit part of our n-gram matrix be dedicated to out-of-vocabulary words. We're going to calculate a probability for them, even if we have never seen them before. How can we do that? There's several ways, but this is an example of it, how it can be done. When we have our training set, we're going to choose some of those words and call them, you know, the real words, the ones that we will use. How can we do that? Um, again, we're going to separate the real words from the non-real words or other words. Maybe we can have a vocabulary in advance, like a list of words in English or a list of frequent words in English. And then we're going to uh, call all of the words that are both in our training set and in the preset vocabulary, real words. That's one way we could do it. We could also do it internally to the training set. We could uh, calculate if words appear more than once. So most of the words are going to be there more than once, but a few of them are going to be there just one time. We're going to call the ones that appear more than once real, and we're going to call the ones that appear only once the non-real or the other words. So we have two types of words in our training set, the ones that are frequent and the ones that are infrequent, for example. We're going to take the infrequent words or the other words and we're going to convert them into some tag that tells us that they are unknown or out of vocabulary. So when we're doing the normalization process, before we train the n-gram, we replace those words with the tag unknown. So if the input has something like, hi, I'm Mr. Meeseeks, and the word Meeseeks only appears once in the training set, then we replace me seeks with the unknown marker. And you will do that throughout the training set. And now the training set does have an unknown word and we can calculate probabilities in our bigram matrix for unknown elements. So being preceded by an unknown element and being followed by an unknown element. And we will use these unknown probabilities for any time we see a word that we've, that we've never seen before. So anytime someone comes up with something new, we're just go, and if we don't find it in the others, we're gonna say, oh, this is type unknown. 
and we're going to use the probabilities for the unknown types. So this is one way that we can deal with out of, out of vocabulary words. The last topic we need to discuss is biases in the training sets. So when we have the bigrams, for example, or the trigrams, we're essentially trying to predict from a series of words what is going to come next. And there's all sorts of humor about this. For example, uh, these are made with the iPhone 8. So I'm a leaf on the wind. What me play the piano is what the model uh, predicts. And of course, these predictions are based on the data that the phone was trained on, the data that we had seen before and that we're using to predict the, the model that tells us which words come next. And again, the input that we have determines the kind of uh, probabilities we're going to get in the model and the kind of output it's going to provide. If you have the time, do read this report about how um, Microsoft launched this uh, chatbot that was supposed to learn with artificial intelligence from the feedback that it got from other people. And it became a racist in less than a day because it kept hearing people throw um, ridiculous input at it. And so it incorporated it into its neural network. Even for our simple n-gram models, what we have in the input is going to determine our probabilities. For example, look at, um, look at these inputs. Uh, something that we could get in, from Twitter written in African-American vernacular English. Uh, my phone finna die. This is used in many southern dialects of the United States. means my phone is ready to die or is about to die. We could get a tweet in Nigerian English, for example. Better get your IT placement with Twitter. We would get a tweet in Indian English. I passed out of college, which means uh, I, I graduated from college or I succeeded in college in American English. It is very expensive to collect input data. It's very, it's very difficult and expensive to collect 100 million words in a language. So you get them from wherever you can. And so historically, this has led to some uh, dialects being overrepresented as training inputs. For example, in the US, most of the data that is transcribed is things like books, or if it's speech, for example, then it's the news as narrated by the newscasters in formal American English. So if you only have the bigrams from the news from American English, then you're probably never going to see a bigram with phone finna, finna die. And so your input is not preparing the engram model to predict these structures which happen in the real world, but were never observed in your input. This is one issue that you might run into. A more serious one is that same as word to vec and same as every other model of machine learning, the if your uh, if your bigrams in the input have some bias, like having, for example, black women and then some negative property, if this is what the input uh, is, then these are the probabilities that the engram model is going to incorporate. And people have demonstrated the, the, the terrible effect on this, for example, on search engines on the autocomplete. I do recommend this book from Sofia Mojanovo, uh, Algorithms of Oppression, which deals with exactly this problem, the kinds of predictions that we get from collocations. So we have to be very wary of the input we give our system and how um, it, is re uh, it is representing the actual usage of the model or not, and um, how it's representing the world and whether it's importing the biases of the people in the world into the algorithms. No amount of math is going to save us from that. In summary of the last two videos, we can split the data into, for example, training and testing, into training, validation, and testing. And we do this so we can get probabilities for the model and then test it as if it were out in the real world. 
we can measure how, how good our model is by calculating the perplexity over the test set, which means how surprised you are when you see the sentences in the testing set based on your uh, training probabilities. You can explicitly create out of vocabulary probabilities using, for example, words that are very infrequent so that you can deal with words that the model has never seen before. And you can deal with bigrams that the model has never encountered. Finally, you always need to uh, keep your eyes open for what kind of input you're providing to the system to make sure that it doesn't react in unexpected or biased ways. In the next video, we're going to look at a concrete application of what we've been looking at, spell checking, and why your phone always keeps, uh, uh, why your phone always keeps telling you about the ducking autocorrect. This one in the next video.